Hello, the One Way Baptist Church, under the leadership of our senior pastor, Samuel L. Bull Sr., welcomes you to What's on the Agenda, the news you can use for June 24th through June 30th, 2022. The June Prayer Request booklets are available in the church floor. The value of persistent prayer is not that God will hear us, but that we will finally hear God. Help others to hear from God. Wednesday Bible Studies, June 29th, after COVID Facts with Pastor Bull at 6.30 p.m. Student Ministry also meets at 6.30 p.m. Thursday morning Bible study, June 30th. GPS, God's Precious Seniors with Pastor Emeritus, Bernard Buell, will meet at 10 o'clock a.m. Success takes every person with a unified purpose. Beginning this month, each member is asked to give an additional $25 per week minimum towards the step of commitment. Please use this green envelope for your gifts during service. If you are giving online, please be sure to select the Step of Commitment option. Calling all members. Pastor Bull is inviting you to be a part of the ministry here at OWBC. If you are a member, there is a place for you. Please find your place in the ministry so you may grow in the Lord and help build the kingdom of God. Romans 12 verses 4 through 6 reminds us that our individual bodies have many parts and not all have the same function, but together all make the body function. So it is in the body of Christ, God has given each of us gifts and not all the same, but together God can use us to make this body of believers function for his glory. His Temple Health Ministry, Health Matters, June 26, 2022. June is Cataract Awareness Month. Since it is largely age-related, cataracts are extremely common. By age 75, over 70% 70 of people have a cataract or have undergone cataract surgery to remove the cloudy lens and restore their vision. We all understand how precious our vision is. So how do you prevent cataracts? One thing that can be done to help keep your eyes healthy is a comprehensive eye exam, at least once every other year, or more frequently if you have other health factors. Other steps you can take now to protect your eyes from the formation of cataracts are wear UV blocking sunglasses, take nutritional supplements, quit smoking, and learn your health family health history. Cataract Awareness Thought of the Week. Cataract Awareness Month is a celebration of sight, science, and hope. Make that appointment now to get your eye exam. Remember, better eyes for a better life. Come back next month for more His Temple Health Ministry Health Matters. Sunday Worship Experience. We invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for a one-way worship experience. You may join us via social media on our Facebook and YouTube pages. But we would love to have you join us in person for the full worship experience. If you have been fully vaccinated, including your boosters, and are comfortable, wearing your mask is optional. However, everyone, please use the hand sanitizer provided before entering the sanctuary. We look forward to worshiping with each of you on this Sunday. And our thought for the week, consider this. The next person you meet may need to meet Christ. Then ask yourself, will they find him in me? Have an abundantly blessed week 
And from the desk of Pastor Boo, don't let the devil steal your joy.
Father God, we're so thankful and grateful, Father God, that you touched us with your hand of grace to wake us up this morning, Father God. You brought us safely on our way, Father God. And more importantly, you brought us into your house, Father God. We just thank you in advance of the word, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, that you gave us the ability to breathe this morning that some didn't get this morning, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, that you gave us the activity of our limbs, Father God, and the rightness of our minds. We're here right now, Father God, because we love you and we need you, Father God. We're here for your word, Father God. We're here right now, Father God, because there's something that's going to be said, Father God, that's going to touch us, Father God, that's going to give us that hope that we need to keep on keeping on, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you continue to bless those that are sick and shut in. The, the altar call book, Father God. The bereaved, Father God. Those that have lost family members, Father God, from the shootings in this world and in this country, Father God. We just ask right now, Father God, that you touch them, Father God. Continue to bless our pastor. Keep him lifted up, Father God. Continue to lift up Lady A, Father God. We ask, Father God, right now that we we ask you right now for each and every one of our families and our needs, Father God. We ask all these things in your name, Father God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you could turn with me to Proverbs 3. And we're going to start with verse 9. And the word says, Honor the, Lord, honor the Lord with your wealth, with your first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats and brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline, and do not resent his rebuke, because the Lord disciplines those he loves yes. as a father and a son in his delight, and the son he delights in. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. For he is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may be seated. Amen. Great. Great. 
there's some of that greatness in us. Yes, God, we hear you. <laughs> that God and God is with special ability.
to your feet, everyone to your feet. If you're glad God made you, come on to your feet. God, how we thank you and we praise you. We bless you for this day. Thank you for making us who we are. Thank you for loving us despite, despite of flaws and failures. Thank you for looking beyond and even looking right at our faults. Supplying us with our needs. We praise you to God for another day to be in your house. So many will love this opportunity. So many will love to be out of the hospital and to worship experience. Some would love to be out of a nursing facility. Some would love to be behind, from behind bars to be in your house. And God, here we are in your house and we want to give your name praise. We want to give your name glory because you're worthy to be praised. We thank you for another day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for being in our right mind, dear God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you right now, dear God, because we realize if it had not been for you on our side, God, we don't know where we'd be today. We praise you for another chance to give your name praise and glory. Now, God, I pray that you bless your word this morning. Bless your word this morning. That it touch the hearts, the minds, and ears of your people to receive it. I pray to God in the name of Jesus that you will not let us leave here the same way we came. If we came with a mind to live for you, uh, with a mind to hear from you, I pray to God that we would hear from you this morning. Bless all those that are on the sound of my voice. Somebody needs some help this morning. Somebody's struggling with something this morning. Somebody have some issues this morning that going on in their life don't seem to be getting better. But God let them know we're going to turn it over to you. We're going to put the this and the that in your hands. Songwriter said little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. We put it in your hand dear God. Put it all in your hand. Everything God the good, the bad, the ugly. We put it all in your hands. Hide me behind the cross, dear God, so that people will see or hear none of me but all of thee. We love you, God. We love you because you first loved us. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus, dying on an old rugged cross, but that's not the end of the story. He put him in a bar or two and got up the third day with all power in his hand, and we too can rise above our circumstances. Touch us, touch us, touch. Don't touch the God. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Each and every one on the sound of my voice. Somebody on Facebook, somebody on YouTube need to hear this word this morning. Move in a mighty way and we give your name praise. We give your name glory. Because in the strong, powerful name of Jesus, we pray and all the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, bless the Lord with your hands. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand of praise. There is a word from the Lord this morning. And I want to lift a passage of scripture with you. Part two of our continuation from last Sunday. First Chronicles, open your Bibles to First Chronicles chapter number four, verse nine and ten. Amen. While you're finding it, let me just express my for my wife, in my absence, Lady A, I know she's watching and pray that she feel better, amen, amen. to our minister Grantham and his wife and Inchel and his wife in their absence, they travel, our deacons and deaconesses that are here this morning, all of our ministry leaders to my GPS that I very rarely get to speak to because by the time I get out of church they are at home. Not on their way home, but at home. So I, I want you to know I miss talking with you and I love you. To our GPS, our student ministry, ushers, our greeters, our 
Mighty Music Ministry. Give the Lord a hand of praise for them. Minister Rory, our drummer, guest drummer, Brother Oliver, BSL Safety, parking lot to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Facebook and YouTube followers. Amen. Book of First Chronicles, chapter number four. Commence reading at verse nine and conclude at verse number 10. When you have it, these words are recorded. And Jabez was more honorable than his brother. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Today, this is what we're going to cover. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. NIV says, And enlarge my territory. King James says, and enlarge my coast, that, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. The Bible says, and God granted him that which he requested. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The grass withered and the flower faded thereof, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. I want to preach part two of how to move out of your comfort zone. Amen. How to move out of your comfort zone. Thank you so much, Usher. Have you ever noticed when the elevator is crowded, nobody wants to speak to anybody. You get busy looking at your watch or in the ceiling, looking at the numbers, digging in your purse, trying as hard as you know how to not make eye contact because it makes you uncomfortable. All of us have a level of comfort that we enjoy. And when we are out of that zone, we are unnerved, unpleasant, uneasy. Some people like their house at 78 degrees while others like it freezing. Some people got to have all the silverware together. Forks over here, and spoons right here, all the knives right here. Some people don't care what it looks like. They just grab the first thing that gets in their hand and eat. Because all of us have a level of comfort that we enjoy. Some people got to have the gas tank full. Some folks just ride around on fumes all the time. Don't bother them at all. Some, some people like their house neat and clean. Other people get to it when they get to it. Some folks believe that it doesn't make sense to make a bed that you're going to get right back in that night. All of us have a level of comfort that we enjoy. And we are there, and nobody can move us out of that place. And that's, that's good in your personal life. That's good, perhaps, in your professional life. And if you're okay with where you are financially, socially, or educationally, 
There's nothing wrong with that. To each his own. But don't get comfortable in your spiritual life. Don't, 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 don't get complacent in your level of spirituality because all of us need more prayer. More faith. More love. More hope. We, we need God to enlarge our territory. Jabez, the Bible says, was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother gave him a name that meant the son of my sorrow. Son of my pain. He, he, he might have been the result of a rape or Jabez might have been have come at a time when he, she didn't want a child. Or maybe Jabez may have been born by accident. She may have been out of sort at his conception. She may not have been ready for his birth. But it does not matter how you get here. Every child that is born is a child of God. Every child that comes in this world is not because of an accident. We say it's an accident. But it's by God's providential arrangement. God can put you in the right place. God can get you over the problem of your circumstances. And God can accelerate your performance because you do not have to be what they call you. Because Jabez meant pain and sorrow. Y'all praying with me? But, 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 but because, brothers and sisters, you are at a certain place in your life. All it takes is one moment. And God can change your circumstance. I ought to have some witnesses here who knows that God can turn it around. No matter what your name is, no matter what your condition is, no matter what point in life you were born in, if you put your hand in God's hand, he can turn it around. You don't believe me? He turned it around for Jacob, whose name was Israel. Turn it around for Simon, whose name was Peter. Turn it around for Saul, whose name was Paul. It does not matter, brothers and sisters, the circumstances of your birth. Watch this. You can be born again. His mother named him Jabez because he was the son of sorrow, son of pain. I want y'all to get this, but, but he had enough sense to pray. Somebody ought to help me preach. And, and testify that when you pray, that moves God. When you pray, God is predisposed to come to your rescue. When you pray and pray sincerely and pray genuinely and pray for real because the Bible says after Jabez prayed, Look what it says. God granted him his request. Is that what that said? The last week, verse, told you in verse 9 that Jabez found his place in life. And I told you, brothers and sisters, you need to find your place in life. I told you also he overcame the problem in his life. And I told you, whatever problem you're having, you can overcome that. Then I told you about his performance in life. And I told you there is a performance that you need to do, and I'm referring to as an execution and implementation for the kingdom and God. In other words, there is something that you need to do for kingdom building. Let me unpack this text. Right quick, let you go and get some, not no barbecue today, but get you some, amen. The text is about three things. 
from verse number 10. I'm going to cover verse 10. Text is about three things from verse 10 that would help us on how to move out of our comfort zone. The text is about prosperity, power, and protection. Prosperity, write it down, power, and protection. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory. NIV. The first part of that prayer, brothers and sisters, was a prayer for prosperity. And when I begin this, this, this study, I question God because he told me to tell you that if you want to know how to get out of your comfort zone, ask for prosperity. Right here in the Bible. Jabez said, bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Bless me. And God told me to tell you, that's not selfish. Somebody ought to say amen. Because I can't be a blessing to somebody else until the Lord blesses. I want God's best. Now, if you don't want it, you don't pray that prayer. But I want God to bless me. Now, it's not that I don't want God to bless anyone else. I, I, I don't want you to get that twisted. But the songwriter said it best when he said, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's, I wish I had some help up in here today. Standing in the need of prayer. Now there's a time to pray for folk in the hospital. And there's a time to pray for folk all over this world. And there's a time to pray for your neighborhood. But before you can be ready to, to be a blessing to somebody else, God has got to bless you. And here's what I dare you to do. Here's what I dare you to do, brother and sister. I dare you to break away from the ordinary and watch God bless your life in extraordinary ways. Some of y'all got quiet and really don't believe that because you think it's self-centered and self-serving to ask God to bless you. I don't feel that way. No, 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 no. I want God to bless me with everything he can bless me with. I want finances, I want a home, I want a good, reliable uh, automobile. I want good health. I want peace of mind. I want comfort in my family. I want my children to be blessed. I want my grandchildren to be blessed. I want my mother to be blessed. I want my brothers and sisters to be blessed. I want my wife to be healed. I want God to bless me to continue to be able to buy food. Put gas in my car. Everything I got influence over, I want God to bless it. When I wake up in the morning, bless. When I go to lunch, bless. Not just with food, but, but because some folk got food, but they don't have an appetite. Bless me with a house and a bed to sleep in because some folk got a bed to sleep in but they can't rest. Bless me. That, 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 that was Jabez's prayer for prosperity. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my circle of influence. I want y'all to get this this morning. So that when I go, 10 years after I'm gone, they'll still be calling my name. 
because I've been a blessing to somebody. The songwriter said it like this here. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can stop somebody from doing wrong, then my living shall not. Church folk don't know when to shout. I want to live so that when I leave, when, when I have had some influence over somebody, we, we will live on after, even after I'm gone. And I asked you last week, where are you in life's traffic jam? Hmm? Are you just here? Because I told you last week, when you read the scriptures from First Chronicles chapter 1 all the way until you get to chapter 4 and verse 9, all you read is this person begat that person, and that person begat this person, and, and the Bible says essentially that, that, that they just lived and they died. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to just live and die. I want to influence somebody positively. I want to make an impact on this world. I want God to enlarge my territory. Enlarge my circle of my concerns. Enlarge my influences. If you want God to bless you, brothers and sisters, in extraordinary ways, break away from the ordinary. I see you looking like you looking. Yeah, I see you. Don't settle for a C when you can make an A. Don't, don't. Don't settle for just being a worker on the job where you can become the supervisor or the manager or better yet, an entrepreneur. Be your own boss. Huh? You ought to want the best that God wants to give you. It, it, it's, not, it's, not that, it's not that God don't want to give it to you. Some of you just act scurry. You just act like you don't want it. Some of you act like you don't want God to get you out of your comfort zone. You're comfortable doing enough. Some people say, that'll do. That's good enough. It don't take all that. You don't have to go that far. That's mediocrity. I wish I had some help. And don't settle for mediocrity. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I feel like preaching to myself. Say amen, bull. Amen. When, when God wants you uh, to pursue excellence, be the best you can be. Whatever you are, be the best at whatever you are. Because God has not created you for mediocrity. Watch this. Don't let small people make you small. Get out of that crowd. Get away from folk who think like that. Because if you get in that crowd, you'll be just like them. There's always, somebody shout always, always. room for improvement. Be a cut above. Do more, be more. Because as I told you last week, the cream always rises to the top. Break away from the ordinary. Watch God bless your life in extraordinary ways. Amen? Jabez prayed that God would give him prosperity. Somebody shout prosperity. Now, now let me clear, clarify some of this. I'm not talking about this health and wealth kind of preaching. Name it and claim it. I'm not talking about that because that's, 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 that's the prosperity gospel that I'm not talking about. Doesn't make sense logically. But let me say this one thing, and I'm gonna get on across the field. This health and wealth gospel, this prosperity gospel that I'm not talking about, is this gospel that says you are to sow a seed into my ministry. You've seen them on television. I wish I had some help. Some of y'all sending for spring water. I done seen them. I done seen them. Say, if you sow a seed in my ministry, God will bless you with the harvest. But it never seems uh, to happen that way. 
The reason why prosperity preaching doesn't make sense to me is because linearly it doesn't make sense logically. Because to sow a seed means to get a harvest, am I right? So if I sow a seed, how come you got to get the harvest? Look like to me, if I sow a seed, it ought to come back to I wish I had a witness up in here. I'm not talking about health and wealth, prosperity. I'm asking God, watch this, to bless me with prosperity, to bless me as a channel of blessing so that when he sends blessing to me, he can also send blessings through me. Enlarge my territory. I'm right here in the text. I'm not making it up. Listen, as long as we are satisfied where we are, we are going to be limited in our outreach. Say amen if you can. As long as you're satisfied with mediocrity, you'll never achieve anything great in the kingdom of God. And you were born, you were destined for greatness. Why you say that, Pastor? Oh, Jesus said, greater things than this will you do. But you will never get to those things done if you stay right where you are. I told you last week that, that you'll never grow and develop as a Christian if you're always where you've always been. God has so much more. Do you believe that today? I used to tell them in West Texas, uh, if, if, the, if the only place you've been is West Texas, all you know is West Texas. But if you've been somewhere else, you see God got a big old world. There's a whole lot more stuff going on everywhere else. You say, I didn't know they were doing that. That's because all you've been was in West Texas. You got to go somewhere else. I wish I had some help up in here. God has so much more. Let me tell you something. If you're the same Christian 10 years later, that you were 10 years ago, you're not growing in your faith. You're not, the, you're, not the, you, you, you're not being the person, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that God has called you to be because God wants you to pray for your own prosperity. Jabez said, enlarge my territory. Not only does Jabez pray that God would give him prosperity, but he prays that God will give him, number two, power. Power. It's right there in verse, verse number 10. I see the caboose coming. Y'all better come on. He says, that your hand would be with me. That, that your hand would be with me. Now, have you ever noticed some people, everything they touch, it works out. Everything they are associated with meets with success. That's because God has his hand on their life. I'm a living witness. I, I, I'm a living witness. God can take a nobody and make them somebody to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And let me tell you this here. There's no need for you getting jealous and envious because God blessing somebody else. Because they're not going to stop God from blessing them. <laughs> let me say that slow so I can say it some more. You get mad at folk all you want. God ain't going to take the gift from them because you don't like it. I wish I had some real and honest folks in here. As a matter of fact, God will just make it larger. The more they use it, the more he'll bless them. And you know, yesterday I was listening to that old school song. You can't beat God given. And this is where God want me to put it, right here. The song said, you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. It said, just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high. The more you give. Yeah. Everybody always talking about, he's talking about money. I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about your time, too. Yeah. 
I'm talking about your talent. The more you give, the more God will give. Do I have any witnesses in here? That you cannot be God given no matter how hard you try. Wish I had about 10 or 15 more help, help, help in here this morning. The more you give God your life, the more God will send his power your way. And when you walk in a room, you change the atmosphere. Glory to God. Listen, you're so confident in God's power that you don't even know that whoever don't like you don't like you. Because you're so busy doing what God called you to do, you ain't got time for folk who don't like you. And who's on your side, who's not on your side. Romans chapter 8, verse 31, B said, if God be for us, I wish I had some help in here. Who can be against us? Psalm 37 verse 1 and 2 says, Fret not yourself because of evil do doers, and neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Here it is, for they soon shall be cut off like the grass. Isaiah 54 and verse 17 says, No weapon formed against me help me Holy Ghost, shall be able to prosper. Psalm 27 verses 1 through 5 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up to eat up my flesh, here was what they did. They stumbled. And they failed. Though a host should encamp against me, this will I be confident. I wish I had a Bible reader. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now this is where we shout. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. You talk, boy, I tell you. You can talk about me as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. I wish I had some help in here. You just keep on throwing dirt on me. And I'm going to keep on packing it up under my feet. I'm going to keep on being uh, God, what God wants me to be. You keep on being my enemy, and I'll just keep standing on your back. And God will raise me to heights. But you can't touch me. Huh? Let me say this here, brothers and sisters. Teachers are really good in the classroom. They don't worry about the principal coming in there. They just handle their class. You know how some folk on the job, when the boss come around, they get nervous because you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. Huh? Folk who perform well on their job, they don't get nervous when the boss come around because they're always doing what they're supposed to do. And they're not doing it for a paycheck per se, they're doing it heartily as unto the Lord. What are you saying? What we doing, we ought to do it as we're doing it unto the Lord. When God's power is on you, brothers and sisters, they can't stop you from climbing. I mean, they might slow you down, but they can't stop you. And if you let them, they may delay your progress. But if God chooses to elevate you, nobody can pull you down. Amen. Psalm 110 verse 1 says, he'll make your enemies. Your footstool. Yeah. I wish I had some help. Is there anybody here that who knows that what it's like to be under God's hand? Anybody here know what it's like to be under God's hand? His power will shield you. When God is on your side, he'll, he'll never let anything catch you by surprise. He'll give you what the Bible calls a spirit of discernment. Huh? So that you'll know when these folk that come up in your face don't mean you no good. I wish I had some help up in here. Folk, old folks who said like it's here, you can feed them with a long handle spoon. Tell them, you stay at your house, I'm going to stay in my house. You mind your business, and I'm going to mind mine. I love you, but I got to love you at a distance. Hey, girl, how you doing? 
because if you stay around, there's going to be some drama. Huh? Because I know where I'm going. Do I have a witness here? And I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm, I thank God for his power. And I thank God that he keeps his hand on me. It's right there in verse 10. He said, and that you would keep me from evil. And although my name means pain, keep me so that I don't cause pain. Mm, I'm getting across the field here, y'all. He prayed for prosperity. He prayed for power. Finally, he asked God for protection. I'm gone. He asked for protection. Right here in verse 10. He said, build a fence around me. Because there are some evil people trying to get at me. Is that in your Bible? They're jealous of my upward progress. They're, they're, they're angry about your blessings in my life. God, I can't see the traps that have been set. So, God, I need you to protect me. I need somebody to help me close it. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a witness. He'll let you know what they're saying about you. He'll let you know what they're trying to do to you because... When you meet them, they can't look you in the eye. I wish I had some real folks in here. But I want to let you know, songwriter said, be not dismayed. Whatever be time, I'm closing. God will take care of you. Do I have a witness? Here? Beneath his wings of love abide, God will. Uh, take care of you. David said, David said, I've been young and now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for bread. My brothers and sisters, God will protect you. I said, God will protect you. In the Old Testament, there's a story about the Amalekites who were going to war against Israel. And they said that Israel's God just fights on the level ground. Israel's God won't fight us in these mountains. And the Bible said God told the children of Israel, tell them to come up here where I am and I will show them I'm not just a God on level ground, but I'm a God who can fight in the rugged mountains. Have I got a witness here? You remember the story of Elijah and those prophets of Mount Carmel. He said, how long will you haunt between two opinions? He said, if God be God, then serve him. But if Baal, then serve him. Elijah said, let's have a little contest. Do I have a Bible reader? He said to see whose God is the real God. He said build an altar and let's call on our gods. And the God who answers by fire, that God will be our God. Have I got a witness here? And the prophets of Baal started calling on Baal. About nine o'clock in the morning, and Elijah let them call on him until about 12 noon. And then he started making fun of them. He said, maybe Baal is in the bathroom. I'm paraphrasing now. Maybe Baal is on vacation. 
why don't you call on him a little louder and when they call bail from 12 o'clock until 3 o'clock and bail still would not answer 3 o'clock was the time for the evening sacrifice and Elijah said to make this thing fair let me tell you what I want you to do I wish I had a Bible reader Elijah told took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of Israel and he built an altar then he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold about four gallons of water next he arranged the wood cut up the bull and placed it on the wood he said fill four water pots yes lord with water and pour it on the offering to be burned on the wood have i got a witness here and then he said do it a second time Oh, and then he said, do it a third time. Have I got a witness here? So the water ran all around the altar. He even filled the trench with water. I'm talking about how God will protect you. Elijah approached the altar and said, Lord, Oh Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I feel my help coming now. Today, let it be known that you are God in Israel. And I am your servant. And that God, at your word, I have done all these things. Elijah said, answer me, Lord. Answer me so that this people will know that you the Lord are God and my Bible tells me and he said that when you turn the hearts back to your people the Bible says that fire yes Lord consumed and burned up the offering in that right church not only did it burn up the offering it burned up the bull and then it burned up the wood the stone and the dust and then it lapped up the water that was in the trenches won't God protect you I said oh God protect you is there anybody here God will protect you he protected you all night long while you slept in the very image of death if you trust God if you trust God if you trust and never God he will I said he will he will he will surely bring you out is there anybody here the Lord has protected you find you a neighbor and tell the neighbor I am a witness that God will protect me God will protect me tell him say neighbor if he did it for me he can do it for you it is no secret what the Lord can do what he's done for others he will oh he will do it for you but you gotta get out of your comfort zone you gotta get out your comfort zone can't always be comfortable sometimes God makes us uncomfortable to for us to do what he called us to do do I have a witness here just keep on trusting the Lord songwriter said I will trust in the Lord not for a month not for two months he said but I will trust in the Lord until I till I die is there anybody here that you're gonna trust the Lord. You're gonna continue to trust Him when you can't even trace Him. You're gonna trust Him. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. Stay right there. I will trust. In the Lord. 
the doors is open. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. Tell me, Walter, come on. In the Lord until I.
Let's pray. God, our Father, we come, God, right now. Right now. We come standing, but we come on bended knees on our heart, Lord God. Yeah. We come, God, with a, a gift of thanksgiving to you, Lord God. Yeah. Thank you, God, for this word on today. Thank you. Thank you, God, for how you're removing us out of our comfort zone. Thank you, God, that it's not robbery to say, bless me, Lord, on today, God. So we come today, Lord God, with our hearts lifted up to you. Yeah. Saying thank you, God, for first and foremost, for being our God. Yeah. For not us choosing you, God, but you choosing us. So therefore, God, we come now, God, with Whatever's on our heart right now, God, we lay it at your feet. Asking you, God, to keep it, to use it, to bless it, to breathe on it, God. And to give us what we stand in need of, God. Oh, how we come, God, with our requests. You said in your word, God, that we will make our requests known unto you, God. How you would guard our hearts and our mind with a peace that surpasses all understanding. So God, we're coming, God, because you said that we could. We come, God, trusting you, God, because you said that we could. We come, God, trusting and believing you, God, because you said we could. So we come now, God, with all things, God. Not just some things, God, but all things. Trusting you, God, with those things that we shall leave at this altar. Knowing, God, that you can take it and that you can consume it, God. We know, God, that if we build an altar, God, in our heart, God, that you would consume what we put on it. So we come, God, now, trusting you, Lord God, that we're laying all things, God, on this altar, Lord God, that you would consume it with fire. That you would consume it with your spirit. That you would consume it with your strength, Lord God. And whatever it is, God, we are trusting you, Lord God. Whether it be our finances, God, we're trusting you. Whether it be our family, God, we're trusting you, Lord God. Whether it be an ailment, God, we're trusting you, Lord God. Whatever it is, God, we're bringing it to you right now, God. And we're trusting you, Lord God, to keep it, Lord God. And asking, God, whatever it is, God, that you would have us. And whatever it is, God, that you would declare to us, Lord God. We're asking, God, that it would be according to your will. It be according to your power. It be according to your strength, Lord God. You said, God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So, God, give us the strength to stand. And whatever it is, God, you said that it would not overtake us. So, God, give us strength right now, God. Whatever this situation is, God, whatever this season is, God, Whatever this thing is right now, God, we ask, God, that you would give us the strength to trust you and to stand accordingly, Lord God, that all may see our God high and lifted up. So, God, we thank you. Praise you, God, for what you're going to do and what you've already done, God. We're praising you in advance, God, for what you've already done. Not only in the physical realm, God, but in the spiritual realm, Lord God. And we thank you, God, that you're using us, that you thought enough of us, God, to use us for your glory. So, God, whatever this situation is, God, 
we turn it over to you. And we say thank you in advance. So God, we give you glory. Now God, for those that didn't come, God, you know who they are and you know where they are, Lord God. And we ask God that you would move and touch in the midst of these pews, in the midst of this building, in the midst of this situation, God. Who Those that are watching from all of our social media platforms, Lord God. You can meet them right where they are, Lord God. And we now say thank you in advance for what you've already done, God. We leave this altar with praise on our lips and your presence in our heart, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, with a hand praise, Lord God, and a shout unto a holy God. Thank you, God. And we believe you, God, because we believe on this situation, Lord God. We know, God, that you're able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly, Lord God, more than we could ever think or ask, Lord God. So fix our thinking, Lord God. Cause our asking to say, bless me, O oh Lord, for we're standing in the need of prayer, Lord God. And we know, God, that you're able to do it, Lord God. So God, we thank you in advance. We give your name glory. We leave this place shouting and glorifying your holy and righteous name, Lord God. And it's in Jesus' perfect and precious and powerful name we do pray. And we say amen. God bless you on today. God bless you. Good morning, good morning. Amen. You know, I look out and I see that our numbers this morning are kind of few. But if you have any knowledge of the Bible, you know it says where there's two or three that touch and agree. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I have felt the power and the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. To our Pastor Bull, we want to thank you, dear Lord, for just allowing the Spirit of the Lord to guide you and direct us and lead us this morning. Amen. And to our First Lady A, we are praying with you and we're praying for you. Amen. These are your announcements. So we, we know that we've moved to online announcements and I encourage each and every one of you to check out our One Way website, our Facebook and our YouTube to catch what is going on in our church for this upcoming week. Amen. Do we have any visitors? And if so, would you please stand for words of welcome? Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor and our, our ministers and our deacons and our entire One Way family, we thank you for allowing God to lead you this morning to worship with us. And we don't take that lightly. So we, we want God to bless you not only this this week, but we pray that if you're looking for a church home, that you look no further because we would be honored to worship with you here at One Way. Amen. Amen. And our thought for the week, Pastor preached a powerful message and I heard the word. So I encourage and I challenge each of you to make a conscious decision to step out of your comfort zone and do something that is out of your ordinary. And then watch God take you to higher heights and bless you in extraordinary ways. Amen? Amen. And all the people of God said amen. Pray that you receive what God had for you in the word of God. Were you blessed by the word on this morning? Visitors, we're so glad to have you. That whole row, we 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 figure. We so glad to have y'all. We figured that that row was occupied by some folks that stopped by this morning. We're so thankful for you being here. We just tickled to death. So happy to have you. 
looked like one of y'all wanted to say something. You just sat down. Somebody wanted to say something. Who wanted to say something? I told you. Look at it. She, she heard him, got right on up. I told you. It looked like she want, somebody wanted to say something. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. I'm going to let you say something. Go ahead. So much. God bless you. God bless you all so much. I would that you would take time to fill out those forms that our ushers have so graciously given you so that we can let you know just how much we appreciate you being here. And um, we still say greater is coming. Amen. We're believing that greater is coming. We're trusting God to greater to come. Amen. Let me make these few observations. We're going to go from this place. And you have to wait for the chicken place to open up because they don't open until 11. And it's just 1022, so you got to wait. Amen. Uh, please keep all of the OWBC family members and our friends in your prayers, those that are sick and shut in, bereaved. Now, our administrative secretary, Kathy Lonnie, husband, Joe, lost his mother and as he was traveling to go see her before she passed he had an accident so he flipped his car two or three times but God was so so much of a protector he came out with no scratch <laughs> however he was unable to see his mother before she passed so they would be leaving this uh, Thursday going to celebrate her life so uh, please keep Kathy and Joe Lonnie in your prayers. Amen? Amen. Uh, so the church office will just be open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. No Thursday. Just Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. Amen? Amen. Uh, please keep Sister Yvette Carter, who had knee surgery and is recovering at home, uh, keep her in your prayers as well. Amen? Amen? All of those. We are praying. I want you to know that we are praying for you. Let me thank all of you for your obedience. God is so good in, in our step up. You're doing such a fantastic job. And we're so thankful. Amen. For you. Continue to be obedient. Again, I want to reiterate what she said. Because I know we're not used to this. We just started doing it this year. We're six months into listening to our announcements online. And we just started a new program where we're going to be calling. So something real important, we'll be able to call you. But we need you to do two things. If you got a cell phone, you got to make sure we have the correct number. You need to put it in your phone, one way back to church, so that when we call, you will accept. There's so much spam going on. And if you're not in your system, folks, I don't answer my phone. I look at it, put it back down. So I understand. So you put one way's number in your phone and name so when you get a call from us that's coming from pastor or some, someone associated with one way. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, today, is she not here? She, Sister Giddens didn't make it. Today is Sister Giddens' last Sunday here and she's leaving us. So if you know her and have her number, call her and let her know how much we love her and we're going to miss her. Amen? I hope she's watching. We love you. Sister Giddings, and we will miss you. Pray that God will continue to bless you with the blessing that he see you stand in need of. Amen? Now again, I will uh, say that each one of our ministries is one way looking for you. Music ministry, ushers, BSL, parking lot, women, men, student ministry. We are looking for you. Amen. We're looking. You know, remember back in the day, 
three, that was when they was, uh, Uncle Sam said, I want you. <laughs> you got to be over 56 to know about that. Well, Pastor Buller said, I want you. Get that, get that shot there, Brother Ron. Get that right there. <laughs> I want you. I need you to be a part of this ministry. Get busy. Get out of your comfort zone and get busy in the OWBC ministries. Amen? Amen. All right. So I love you all, and I am praying for you. Please continue to remain safe. Have a phenomenal week. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Please stand as we worship God through the giving of our tithe and our offering. GPS, I love you. I, 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 I don't get so... Sister Diane? Oh, okay then. All right then. Go. Go ahead and get your get your monies together. Get your monies. Get your monies.
for these tithes and these offerings. Step up. Pray to God that you would bless each and every one that's given on there. Return it unto them in a hundredfold to God. Yes, Lord. I pray to God that you will increase the faith of those that have yet to trust you, even with their tithe and their home. God, we love you and we're just satisfied with who you are in our lives. We're satisfied with you being our Savior. We're satisfied with you leading us and guiding us. We're thankful and we're satisfied. And God, I pray that you would bless the offering, bless those that are giving, those that want to give. Don't have it today, don't next time they'll be able to have it. May it be used for the ongoing of that kingdom work here at OWBC. We praise you, we bless you. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor, tell him, Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. This life leads you. Tell them, tell them. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. Look them dead in the eye and tell them. You can depend on me to pray for you, to pray for you. Everybody say, oh. I'm going to keep on praying. Pray. I'm going to keep on praying. Thank you for watching. For more information about the One Way Baptist Church, please visit our website at www.onewaybaptistchurch.com.